I'm Mecky Thump, welcome back to Let's Play No Man's Sky. We are back in Igashinyor, which is the system we were in uh, last episode. And I've just noticed there's a space anomaly here. So we're going to go and see what that is. I would imagine it's Nada and Polo showing up again. Because this uh, wasn't supposed to be an Atlas interface system. But we'll find out and see what they've got to say for themselves. Alright, um, let's see if uh, Polo is still annoyed with us from last time when we did something to piss him off. I actually can't remember what it was. I think we like failed to hug him forcefully enough or something like that. Those flying machines, those walking machines, everywhere. Chase us, hurt us, stop our adventures. Bad robots. Still feeling guilty about my earlier faux pas, I attempt to greet Polo with a hug. Alarm floods the Keck's face and they scuttle into a corner. An awkward moment passes, then Polo makes a conciliatory suggestion. Sentinels are the bane of both of our lives. As I travel, I could make a point of destroying any I encounter. We might then have a better understanding of the irksome machine's weaknesses, and perhaps then we can be friends again too. Though Polo tries to appear aloof, their eyes blaze with relief at the sight of me. They still care then. A small smile accompanies my compensation for the Sentinel data. Oh, what's this? It's a rapid fire projectile weapon, the Pulse Spitter. Uh, interesting. Well, we need. To, we don't have any copper. I guess that's a module here, is it? Yeah. We need iridium for that, and we need copper. We'll keep an eye out for that. And uh, what about you, Nada? Creator of simulation, friend or foe? Paranoia imperative. Galaxy purely causal. Individualism statistical anomaly. Nada is an error. Trust Nada. Trust you. Nada stays back from me this time. The lights dance across their visor like warning symbols. Something has changed between us. Nada explains that their reasoning has advanced. They have found no room in the galaxy for free will, or anything but brutal causation. They worry we are but pawns of whatever higher being created us. Puppets dancing on strings. And Nada suspects me. I am the aberration. Am I the puppet master too? The Corvax marks the location of an Atlas interface. Okay, uh, well, I mean, I guess we don't have to look too hard. Next system we go to, we'll just try and find a, uh, a copper-bearing one. Um, anyway, I've got to go back to back to Nibelheim to do the farm and the uh, collection of various resources for the next planet. So I'll see you when we're ready to move on. Oh, check out what we've got. 235 units of copper saved up. Excellent. I bet we could buy an upgrade for the pulse spitter as well. Um, we won't waste time like going back and checking immediately. But uh, that's nice. So we need to farm some heridium, I think, because I didn't manage to pick any up during the last episode. We also need some antrium. I've got the resonator. So we need Antrium, Heridium, no just Antrium and Heridium and we're golden. Sweet, alright, let's see then. Oh I know why we've got all that copper. It's because when we were doing the one hour grind it kept sending us to uh, Copper Nose, didn't it? But didn't I sell all of that though? I'm pretty sure I sold all the copper we got then. Alright, so let's see, we should now be able to install the Pulse Spitter. Um, seems like, oh, oh yeah. Here's a candidate. 
It's not great. I suppose it is only. Uh, how much more heroin have we got? Okay, we've got enough. It is only like the basic and upgraded one. Right, so I have a warp cell. I've got my pulse spitter, I've got a bunch of heridium, and I've got a dynamic resonator. Antrium now, that's what we need. Yeah, there we go, that's us. 100 antrium, 2 voltaic cells, and we're ready to go. Right, you're right. Uh, let's get off to the next system then. So we've got a few jumps to go. Let's see, 174842. So, next target, Nawarabiki, which is about four light years closer to the centre of the galaxy. Doing a lot of sideways motion at the moment. Well, there are friendlies in this battle, and we do have some iron saved up. Let's see if we can do anything this time. Try and avoid hitting the freighter itself. There's one of them. And there goes two. We're burning through that iron reserve though. Yeah, I'm trying to shoot at this one. Can you, why isn't it locking onto him? Right. Five to go. They're not very heavy, heavily shielded. Oops, I've lost it. There he is. It's like they got one themselves. Maintain the lock. Got him. Okay, three to go. We got one. Alright, so it should just be these two left now. Oh 
shit. Alright. Put the last of our iron in there. One remaining. We've been through 500 iron, a bunch of zinc and some shielding plates. We did it! I think we've saved them. Let's make sure we get that canister. All oh, right, we actually get to be the heroes in this battle. Nice, and we ranked up. Here we go. Well, we're not fighting another battle. We've got no iron left for the shields and barely any shields left. Where's the commander? Thank you, friend. You have my appreciation. Can I offer you a reward? Lights flicker rapidly across its visor, and its head nods imperceptibly forwards. They seem to... it is showing me... Gratitude? Another small nod indicates a stash of useful supplies. Payment for assisting them. We certainly will take supplies. We got a strange... No, we didn't get anything. He's offering me a 10 slot multi-tool. Oh, and some chrysonite. And plutonium. And some antimatter. Okay, I can dig that. Uh, <laughs> how do we get out of this place again? Here we go. Well, good luck with the second wave. I don't think I can take off because this other guy's in the way in front of me. I'm holding down the launch button, nothing's happening. Let's have a look at this lead ship here. It's an 18 slot class B fighter versus our 22 slot shuttle, so no, we don't actually want that. We just want him to piss off. Why did everyone come into slot into uh, landing bay one? More importantly, can I somehow transfer my ship to? Pretty sure that's not meant to happen. Okay, you know what? Let me try. Uh, let me try reloading. Maybe that'll clear the space battle or something. Wait a minute. It's not even generating a save point when I get out of my ship. Just like I'm stuck here for the moment. Hmm. Well. The price is 73 million. That's a lot more than 19 million. I guess freighters do come in different sizes. 
What happens if I click if I click uh, accept? Oh, I can't click accept. I don't have the money. I can't even bloody try saving and reloading because it's not creating a save point on here. My last save was 26 minutes ago, which is well before the uh, well before the space battle. Okay, screw it. This could last forever. Uh, I'm gonna have to reload, and we'll see where we end up. That's so fucking stupid. I'm not sure if it was because there were three ships parked in front of us, or because we were in a space battle, but we couldn't actually take off from the freighter. Right, where the fuck am I? I haven't even. This is right back at the fucking start of the episode. I haven't even built the pulse. Well, we have spoken to Nada and Polo. We've got the pulse spitter recipe. Okay, I'm gonna have to go and do the farm again. I'm gonna have to go and. You know what? I might, I might skip the farm this week. Yeah, we hadn't. This is before we'd done the farming for this week. I'm not getting into another one of those space battles. They're so stupid. Your reward for winning a space battle is getting trapped on board the freighter when the next one begins. Okay, so we're not getting involved in the space battle this time. Um, we need to find the space station, which is right here. Uh, this is, I believe, a Corvax system. So, once again, pursuing that uh, least known of our story paths. And in fact, we'll find out what this Corvax enlightenment meant. Okay, code entity Igelanes. Igelanes. Uh Clarify, entity research topic, entity high share research. The electronic life form indicates that it needs help with something on its screen. It jerks and vibrates with nerves before pulling my finger towards the screen. When my hand is in place, it suddenly turns its mask lights off, refusing to witness my vital decision. There are three clear images that I can choose from on behalf of the entity. Dangerous looking predators, a geological mining survey, and an orbiting asteroid cluster. Um. It doesn't know what it wants to research next, I guess. Oh, <laughs> clarify gods, but gods isn't gods. It's a Corvax word that we don't understand. Um, the predators, maybe? Um... A geological mining survey or an orbiting... Um, the middle one. The life form receives a new multi-tool technology blueprint. It presents it to me with thanks. Plasma damage radius. All right, whatever. Oh, excuse me. Uh, oh no, exosuit upgrades. We don't want that, we want uh, pulse spitters. Pulse spitter upgrades. Alright. Um, let's proceed to a planet and get on with some uh, archaeology. Why can't I target this one? Oh, here we go. Yuga Siam DC380. Oh, I'm pressing C to scan. Condensium Gold Iridium Heridium. Uh, 
I think the only thing that would really set a planet apart is if it had like a a manufacturing facility or something that we could go to. There are three planets and one moon in this system. Uh, Aringin Gains is a possibility. There's one way over there. Again, I'm pressing C to scan, nothing's coming up. Uh, now, there should be a moon somewhere. Planetary moon. We've already scanned a ringing gains. Um. All right. Well, there doesn't seem to be much else we could go for. So let's go over to a ringing gains. Special roids are aluminium. Are we far enough away from the battle yet? No. Alright, well we've suddenly accelerated to like a million miles per hour, so... Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> I suppose we'll set down at the abandoned building here. Uh, that took quite a lot of faffing around at the start of the episode, so... Oh, there is actually a moon on the other side of this. Just before... We set down over here. Let's have a look. There doesn't seem to be anything on there. Okay. Oh, this is, this is where the uh, stuff is. Okay. Well, it's a pleasant enough kind of place. It's an extreme sentinel planet with a burning hot atmosphere, but it's a nice enough looking place. Okay. Let's see what's in here then. So we've got to be wary of sentinels, they'll attack on sight. Hello? You alright? I did. Let's see what we get from the data log. Where did the Sentinels come from? No ships are ever seen arriving to deposit them. Yet we know they have spatial drives and can appear on any planet. Do they build themselves from resources on the worlds that they infest? Like a mechanoid virus, drawing on the host body to metastasize new matter? Korvac's science speaks of metals in their makeup that should not exist in our age of the universe. No one has ever seen them built. They are simply here, as if the universe expresses them into existence. Nice, 42 nanites. Well, we can get into this room because it's been blown open by whatever caused the devastation around here. All right, I think. Oh no, it's busted. Yeah, it's busted. Well then, let's get that. Uh, Cheer bay down and get started.
Hold on. Oh! It's 200 Heridium, not 100, isn't it? Okay, we need to find a little bit of Heridium first. Whoops! We just need to fly around a little bit and find a uh, resource deposit then. Here we go. Should be it. Well, leave me. Fuck off. Let me in. All right. Find me a ruins. <laughs> leave me alone, little bugger. Oh, got to stop here. I think that's titanium. That's very nice stuff. We might as well you chuck in one of those power canisters. Damn it, we need to keep an eye out for some plutonium as well. Okay. I thought we had quite a bit of plutonium, but then I had to recharge the ship. Actually, I think I've changed my mind about this planet. It doesn't look very nice. It actually looks a bit like, um, it's a bit like Mordor, like just at the point where the uh, the climate change skeptics were saying, um, no, you're right, there's something funny going on here. No, it's not quite Sauron's stomping ground just yet. But uh, it's definitely getting there. Right, here we go. Oh, looks like we've got a, a two-piece ruin. The broken bridge, maybe. Well, there's nothing on this piece. We have got a bunch of knowledge stones over here. Should be a third one upstairs, I think. Was it upstairs? There was a third one somewhere. No, it's not upstairs, it's down here. Right, so that's that. And now, where's the actual thing? It's over here. Wow, 102 degrees. You really can't stay out that long on this planet. Uh, how do we get up to that? I think I have to jetpack across from, I guess, that place. Okay, I think we had. There's just enough coverage here to protect us from the bloody firestorm. God damn it. Get back up there, you. Go. 
got it. Okay, let's see. I hear the distant voices of the Korvax entities who once worshipped here. As they whisper, words written in my own language glow faintly on the monument. The echoes want to be heard. Through research and study, we, the Korvax, became powerful within ourselves. The one mind convergence flourished. Nurtured like a sapling in the light, it grew tall and mighty. The sentinels brought us the gift of knowledge. We gave thanks to the Atlas. Oh, wow. So, I guess the sentinels were on the Korvax side, at least at some point. I wonder what happened then, because it sounds like they were the Korvax were in pretty good with the Sentinels. So yeah, it sounds like the Enlightenment was a... Uh, was a kind of lament for the time when they were friends with the Sentinels. Right, where's that monolith? Oh, just a minor... Not a minor clearing, but... Could get something from this cargo drop. Shielding shards, not bad. Saves us having to spend real resources to charge up our life support and uh, has protection and such. Okay, this is a three word monolith. So we get remove and we get repair and we get something. Resources. Okay, we just need to kind of stay in the clear. We, we got zinc for that. That's really cool if you get zinc for destroying sentinels. Alright, what do we get for the monolith? For many ages it appears that pilgrims have carved numerical figures between the glowing glyphs of the monolith. Looking down I notice an ancient coin. I scrape the ground with my boot and unearth several more. The site is otherwise silent. Perhaps it's eternally unresponsive or perhaps it waits for something. Well, we can drop ten units on it. The echoes that dwell here awake. They thank and bless me. Got an Atlas word, got a Corvax casing. Nice, okay. Well, that's another episode of No Man's Sky. So. Looks like the Corvax and the Sentinels were indeed best mates at some point, and uh, they seem pretty nostalgic about it, according to their monolith, according to their uh, ruins. We'll see how that progresses. I mean, there must have been some kind of schism at some point, because they don't seem particularly friendly with the Sentinels now. And I guess we'll have to chase up a few more, uh, a few more ruins and see. For now, that was Let's Play No Man's Sky, and I've been Eki Thumb. I do hope you've enjoyed it like and subscribe if you'd like to see more gameplay of this game and I will see you next time.